So Jesus paints a scenario like this. Jesus says, I was there in front of you in need. I was hungry, and you did not acknowledge me. You did not feed me. I was without clothing, and you did not take care of me. I was in prison, and you did not visit me. I was sick, and you did not care for me. And those that were listening to Jesus, Jesus they said, Jesus, we know you pretty well. We're familiar with you. We've been following you. And we don't recall a time when you were in prison. We don't recall a time when you were hungry. And we don't recall a time when you were sick. And we don't recall a time when you were without clothing. When did this happen, Jesus? And Jesus says, when there's somebody in front of you that fits that description and you don't intervene, that's when we are judged. And imagine we're out there, we're working away, and we notice, it's, it's real sudden, out of nowhere, a hospital gurney is rolling down Fresno. A hospital bed is rolling down Fresno, and there's a patient that's very disturbed, sitting straight up and screaming, Help! Well, we're a very hospitable and kind bunch, too. And so we spring into action, right? Elijah jumps out there, chases down the gurney, and others jump in there and help uh, care for the patient because, you know, we care. And we, we go, wow, what? That was the craziest thing we've ever seen. That is so bizarre. What a wild, random thing. And just as we're catching our breath, Imagine another runaway wild gurney comes down Fresno. And the same thing, the patient's on the gurney sitting straight up screaming, Help! Well, we've just done this just a minute ago. So we spring back into action. We rescue that situation. We, we bring the gurney to the side and we address the need of the patient that's there. And it's, it's just a bizarre afternoon. And we're scratching our head. And every 30 minutes, Amy, this same situation happens. Would you run out there and chase a gurney down? <laughs> well, we do what churches do best. We decide to call a committee together, right? <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> Busa, what's happening here? I don't understand these gurneys keep rolling, rolling down Fresno. And we start to wonder, and we, we send our, 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 our smartest, our brightest, we say, hey, we're going to dispatch a group to go up Fresno Street and see what, where those runaway gurneys are coming from. What's the situation up there that's causing this to repeat itself every few minutes? Because we know that there must be a system, or there must be something out of whack, there must be some kind of crisis up the road that's... Uh, responsible for these runaway gurneys. Straits like we haven't seen in a long time. Do you listen to Bruce uh, Hornsby? Do you know Bruce Hornsby? Yeah. Uh, I, I like Bruce Hornsby, but I don't know that I can sing uh, that song. But do you know that, that, that song, That's Just the Way It Is, right? Oh, yeah. oh, it's a very powerful song. If you don't have it, go download it from uh, the internet. Or go to your library. Standing in the line, marking time, waiting for the welfare of dime, because they can't buy a job. The man in the silk suit hurries by, and he catches the poor old lady's eyes, and just for fun, he says, get a job. That kind of reality is playing out in our current day and age. People see the protests, people see the demonstrations, people are wondering, why are they doing this? Why don't they just get a job? I have my job, why don't they just get their job? I don't know, I, I get the, these updates on my cell phone that rings or vibrates, or, and, and it's every week it's the unemployment rate, and it's been hovering around 9% nationally. Now it'll go up a decimal point, it'll go down a decimal point, but it's been consistently staying around 9% for the last uh, few months. But what folks might not understand here is that in Fresno, the unemployment rate is 16%, is the figure I've heard just recently. Now, 9% national unemployment rate, 16% unemployment rate here in Fresno. But then there's another rate that we don't think of, or maybe we don't hear about, uh, because we hear so much about the unemployment rate. There's the underemployment rate, right? And nationally, that's around 16% underemployment rate. And what underemployment is, 
is that maybe you're qualified, you've been educated, you've been trained for a particular career, for a particular field, but there are no jobs available or you can't find a job, a placement in that field. And so you are underemployed working, working in another uh, area. Or maybe it's the people that have uh, part-time jobs and they put the part-time jobs together, right? To, to, to try to sustain from week to week. And, and that's underemployment too. And so we have this, this reality where we couple the 16% unemployment right here in Fresno. And then you couple that with underemployment here in Fresno. And you start to get to a figure 25, 26% of people in the labor force struggling to make it from paycheck to paycheck or without a paycheck. 25, 26%. To put that in historical context, some of you well know that that was the, the rate in the Great Depression. 25, 26% unemployment. And I guess historically, there's been so much time and, and, and a generation, two generations, did not know what it was like to live in the Great Depression. And so it's, we're removed from that other than documentaries on PBS. And it's hard for us to imagine that kind of reality. One of our church members, Ted Andrews, was telling the story about growing up as a child in the Great Depression. And we have a few folks like that that can tell us what that was like. But that's the world we live in today. And so there are people that have applied, that have been work, looking for employment, that have been out of work for some time, and it, it just isn't there. It just isn't there. It's not that they're not willing to work. It's just not there. Jesus had this beautiful image, this beautiful dream that the kingdom of God is within humanity. In Luke chapter, in Luke chapter 17, the kingdom of God is within us. And Jesus had this grand thesis that, that we can live out our faith in such a way that we can bring heaven and make it a reality here on earth. So that's what we're striving to do as a people of faith. As a people of faith, we have a voice. We can bear witness to the values, to the hopes of being inclusive, of equality. And that's a part of our responsibility as a people of faith, to bear witness, to proclaim, to speak that things should not be this way. Yes, that the system is broke and that it needs remedy. That it that just doesn't need to be fixed and plugged and patched up, but it needs to be transformed. If the system is creating a terrible pattern of people in crisis, then we as a people of faith need to be a part of the transformation. The whole system needs to be transformed. And we have the responsibility to, to bear witness, to be voice, but also to stand up with those that are in need and solidarity, to stand up with them and to be a voice for those who don't have voices. That the, it's, a, it's a mess up the creek. And it seems like there's no paddles and we don't have resources. But we have our faith. We have the power of God within us. We have imagination. We have a moral conviction. Not just to take care of our own needs and, and, and keep our own family intact. Certainly that's, that's instinct and that's a noble thing but to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. A godly ethic, we can bear witness to the need for equality, to the need of inclusivity. The problem is, one, one, one last thought. The problem is, 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 yes, there's a widening gap between the 1% affluent, powerful, and the 99% of everybody else. That, that's a problem, there's a gap that's widening. But, but the 99% of us, the middle class, those below the middle class, the margins are shrinking. Think about this. The margins are shrinking. From people that survive paycheck to paycheck, they're almost right there with the underemployed. That it's so easy to go from paycheck to paycheck to be into the underemployed. And then it's so easy from, from the underemployed, the margin has shrunk. It's so easy to go from being underemployed to being out of work. And from there, it's very easy to be completely...